Hey you all, this is Josh Weimus back, and today I've got another episode of Gambit, and I guess it's about time. It's been quite a while since my last episode. In the previous episode, I had um, the wonderful Silverette on board, and we, we, spoke, we spoke about a bunch of stuff, and um, I don't remember what we spoke about, because it's been that long since I've put one of these videos up. And, like, I've been working on Gambit and a few other things, but, you know, it's it's hard to to juggle two part-time jobs and play games and keep up with other stuff and edit videos. So, it, it like, I know people can do it, but for me it's not that easy. So, today's video I am working on um, this turn here and just making sure I have all the beams in place. And uh, I think there's a lot of footage that I did cut out of this. I don't remember how much I've, I've cut out, but um, this this whole episode is just me placing planks of wood. <laughs> so it's going to be hard to talk about anything over this. So uh, um, I don't really know what to talk about. It's just random, just a bunch of wood. Now it it's kind of hard to because uh, I, I had to go back and forth between other areas of the coaster that I have worked on. Um, to make sure that I'm still doing this right, as well as still looking at other references of GCI coasters to make sure that, again, I'm placing the wood correctly um, based on how they would build it. Um, I'm assuming that this coaster is a newer GCI built onto this hillside, so I'm pretty sure that a few, quite a few trees were removed for this attraction. So I'm, I'm not sure if... I don't really know how they would build it, so... Because I want to, I want to make it look like there's a forest, but I also have to understand. Okay, it's kind of hard to build this coaster in the middle of a forest because they would need some kind of crane in here. Um, so there'll be a lot of portions of the ride that I will have some trees that have been grown up that weren't chopped down. But there'll be a lot of areas where there were some trees chopped down and some land clearing and some land smoothing to to get a crane in to place the track and to lift to to lift the. Um, the bents into place, as well as make sure you know there's access for construction and for maintenance on the on the on the structure. So a lot has like there's also some stuff that I've done off camera, such as some terrain work done off camera, such as some terrain work. Uh, I did a lot of terrain work off camera and a lot of drawing in my sketchbook, kind of what I want. So this this whole intersection here where the track crosses over and under itself. I'm going to have a, uh, a building that the queue will actually go through. So I sometimes you see it, but you'll see the um, I have a path kind of kind of floating next to the track. It's sort of a place marker to make sure that I have clearance for the peeps and to make sure that the staircase was going to have clearance next to the coaster track too. So this I think this segment is about four hours of time lapse, three or four hours of time lapse. And what's funny is. I've done a lot of work on Gambit since, like, since then, and I still have about seven hours of time lapse footage to edit, and a lot of footage, like, I did, I didn't, I didn't record for a lot of it. So there, so there, there's, there's a lot of things you'll see in the next few videos that I release that it'll be jumping ahead to parts of the build that I didn't um, bother with recording time lapse footage of. So, oh, I guess I forgot to edit that out. Um, like here, you can see I'm jumping back and forth with other areas of the build to make sure that I'm keeping the same structure throughout the ride. And, uh... Nothing to talk about. Wow. Yeah, there is that path. So, the path is going to go up, um, and then out, and then out. It's really hard to explain unless... I think I, I, think I posted some sketches in the previous video. So if you want to see what sketches I'm talking about, Go to the previous episode of Gambit and look at those sketches. Speaking of Gambit, I think I'm going to rename the ride because I'm not sure what I'll rename it because the theme is more, you know, Mountain Lodge, like Smoky Mountain kind of thing. Something like Dollywood, something like what Dollywood would do. So I, I think I'm going to go with that more rustic theme. And I've also went ahead and changed the music in the time lapse because. It, as as great as Epidemic Sound was, I didn't really see justifying, you know, spending fifteen dollars a month on music that I'm hardly ever going to use. So I would rather just switch to something that's royalty free, 
and that I don't have to pay for, um, rather than paying for something that I'm hardly ever going to use. So it's I went ahead and canceled that subscription, and I've removed that rustic music and replaced it with the in-game Planet Coaster music. It's more fitting, and now there there are now YouTube does have royalty-free rustic music. Um, I may use that for some cinematics of this ride. You know, get some get a rusty you know soundtrack as well as um, put that same music in the game. So when you're you know when you're riding the ride or walking around the plaza, you can hear this same music. It's royalty free. That way, nothing nothing that way nothing nothing bad happens, and no one comes knocking on my door asking for money because no one wants that. And I may, um, once I actually finish the physical ride structure and anything pertaining to the ride itself and the plaza that I have in mind, I may give the ride back to Silverette to um, add some rustic, you know, mountain lodge buildings on the on the mountainside, maybe some log cabins for the guests of the park to stay. Because you know how Dollywood has log cabins, I think it's on the north side of the property on the mountain behind Thunderhead up there. It's between Dream World Resort and the park. There's a mountain there that there's log cabins on, and um, the the Gatlinburg fire I think burned burned a couple of those cabins because that, that's how close the fire got to the park. Um, the park was really at a great risk of being burned down um, during that forest fire, and that that would have broken the hearts of a lot of people if, you know, if we were to lose that park. But there's a lot of rich history to that park, so I, I would hate to see something bad like that happen to it. So, I'm still kind of mixed with the exact details of the buildings that I want to go for, but you'll see in later videos, I'm not going to really spoil too much, but I had started some foundational work around the station, because this part of the track here is mostly terrain flowing. The, the track follows the terrain, or maybe the terrain was slightly adjusted to fit the track. I would probably assume that some of the terrain was removed here. Um, for the track, and especially at the station area, a lot of terrain was changed and altered and removed, and a lot of concrete was placed for the whole station and maintenance area, transfer track area, and part of the queue area. So that that whole area of the ride will be manicured. The landscape is all manicured, whereas over here, on the majority of the layout, it just follows the natural terrain. with the exception of some areas of terrain having been altered. But I believe for the most part it's all... the terrain will all be natural. And then, I don't know if you guys know him, but N7, but N7, we're good old Mike Sheets on YouTube, uh, over on the White Tubs, he, um, he's... as I've... so he's, he's a member of Bro Nation. Definitely a great Discord server. You should check it out. If I remember, I'll put a link in the description um, so you guys can join our wonderful Planet Coaster community. Oh, right here, I'm working on getting some concrete walls in place because I think I got too tired of putting supports, so I felt like doing something else. Anyway, so good old Mike Sheets. I messaged him. Ask. So, ask, so he he's he's a fanatic. I'm not not sure if he's a fanatic. But he's really into, I guess, gardening and landscaping from what I from what I've gathered. So I've asked him if maybe at some point in the future, whenever I finish this, I can send him the park file to do a lot of the a lot of the landscaping, you know, the trees, the natural sort of foliage growth, because that's something I haven't practiced with. Um, I have had practice with purposely man-made um, gardening, something like Disney would do. Because for Happily Ever After, I had the gardens and stuff in front of the castle all done with the flowers and everything, but it was like 80,000 pieces. And the show wouldn't run, so I had to unfortunately get rid of all of that work I did. And you'll see that um, in my Happily Ever After series when I do my behind the scenes. I'm going to show screenshots and stuff of, this, of the areas of the park that I had built, but then had to remove because the game couldn't handle it. It just couldn't handle the the near 200,000 pieces that I had in that file. Or no, no, it wasn't that 200,000. That's one mansion that I'm thinking of. There was there was 80,000 something pieces that I had to go in and remove because honestly, 
the whole focus of that is the show, not the scenery. So I went ahead and replaced all those flowers with just some simple bushes. For I'm going to leave it at that. But I'm, I'm, I may try to give this file over to good old Mike Sheets and see if he can do what's called nature. Which is realistic fake land sense when I say it like that. But basically it's um like let's say an area of grass. It's not manicured, but it's still man-made. I, I he he explains it so much better and I think he's got a video on that. I don't I don't remember what video it was that he was talking about nature. Not nature, but nature. I I don't remember the term. So you know he said maybe at some point if I give this over to him he'll be able to do it so um, be able to do it so um, you know I'm, I'm, I am I do want to get more people involved on this project not just me or Sylv so but I am probably going to get I am definitely planning on giving this back over to Sylv so he can do some more work around the coaster kind of like what he did with the Jaegerhorn where you have the coaster and some buildings some shops a couple of other rides and a whole plaza area so with Gambit here the station it's sort of not really a dead end of the park, but you but you do have to go off the beaten path to get to this ride. So, you know, I'm going to have a river. You cross a bridge to get over to here to the ride. So, I'm going to see if he can do something with a river and have some buildings and some other things going on um, at some point. Not sure when. I may even add a hotel. I don't know. It's just a bunch of ideas. Let's see, we're just about just about halfway through the time lapse. So wow, it's only halfway through. Um, heads up, there are no cinematics in the end, because since I did do so much work to the whole area before I filmed and edited this time lapse, I I don't have any cinematics to show off. Um, I won't really have any cinematics until after I've edited all the time lapse that I have, because I'll have to go back in and get a few cinematics. Um, I don't know if you've seen, but I, so you'll see in a later episode, I'll be, you'll see where I've, I was making the, the maintenance barn and the GCI transfer track and stuff like that. Um, you'll see, and I'm basing it mostly off of Mystic Timbers and Invader at Bush Gardens. Mystic Timbers is at Kings Island. Um, I have released the GCI transfer track on the workshop. Not the building, but the, just the track it, uh, that you use, and I think the floor, maybe? I, I don't remember if I have the floor in that file or not. But it's on the workshop um, under Joshua underscore Amos and just type GCI transfer track on the workshop and you should be able to see it. I also released a BNM transfer track. It's, it is in the colors of Fury 325. It's also in the style of Fury 325, but BNM typically sticks with that same style for our transfer track. So you can adjust the height as necessary. Um, the train length is for an eight car train length of a uh, Giga coaster model, or excuse me, a Rage coaster model, I think is what it's called in the game. So you may have to adjust the length if for longer trains. Like if you have a B&M style staggered seated train, or maybe you have a nine car train like Goliath at Six Flags over Georgia. So you may have to adjust the length slightly to accommodate for that. Um, it should be easy to do. You just have to highlight a whole section and kind of scooch it over or highlight the whole thing raise it up and then extend the supports down um, I'm sure there's a way to do that with the GCI transfer track I think it's just the track the wall the storage tracks because the whole the whole thing slides back and forth or excuse me it slides from side to side typically with the three coaster with a three train coaster one train will stay on the track, the main running track, and the other two are on the storage tracks. That's why there's only two storage tracks. With Invader at Bush Gardens, there's only one storage track because one is only one storage track because one train and that train that coaster runs two trains. It'll have I think they have three trains though. One just stays in maintenance and they they cycle them out. Um, one train. So at the, for nighttime operations, one train stays on the running track and the other train is on the other side of the wall on the storage track. So here with Gambit, I have two, two storage tracks and then the main running track. And then the whole table will slide from left to right. 
with brakes in the front and back to help control the train and get it in place. So I believe that whole sliding bit is on the workshop. I don't remember how many pieces it is. Now it is Theme Maker's Toolkit stuff in there, so it'll ask you, hey, do you want to install these? Just say yes, and the file sizes of those pieces aren't too big, so it won't crash your computer or anything. Um, so it should be fine. It'll just ask you, hey, do you want to download these TMTK items? Just say yes, and you should be able to use the transfer track in your park. Just line it up with um, whatever wooden coaster you have. Just make sure it is at a zero degree angle, zero degree banking, and it's a straight section of track, and it should fit just, just nicely. Now with a lot of these vertical supports, sometimes I extend them further into the ground just in case if I decide to alter the terrain after I actually build the supports. Because um, I've got a feeling that parts of the terrain is going to change, especially right there where you see the path. The terrain will be man-made manicured there because it's going to be sort of an ADA ramp, but it's a curved ramp going up the hill there into the building that the track goes through. And then there'll be some stairs on the opposite side. Now, for ADA access, if you don't know what ADA is, it's Americans with Disabilities Act. Basically, it means, hey, install an elevator here for wheelchairs. So, for Gambit, there is an ADA access elevator. Um, it'll be, uh, I'll show you at some, it'll be, uh, I'll show you at some point whenever I get to it, where it's gonna be. Now, this queue is not ADA compliant for wheelchairs or scooters. So if you are in a wheelchair or scooter, you would need to take the elevator up to the station building. However, this queue is ADA compliant for walking people. Um, you know, the staircases aren't too, too long. The ramp would be no more than like, I think what, 4.5 degrees. I don't know, it, it, depend, it, it varies depending on the state you're in in the country. Um, and other countries are also different with these kinds of rules. I don't know if Europe has any kind of rules in regard to this. I think I based mine off of the state of North Carolina or Florida. And I have, I have on the workshop an ADA compliant ramp. It has, the ramp is already made. It's like a guide that you can build your ramp off of. It's not an actual ramp. Um, it's a guide you can use. Just place it on a flat surface. It's already at the maximum length and the maximum degree of incline. So I think it's 30 feet long and I think 4.5 or 4.2 degrees of incline. That's like the maximum that you're allowed to have. So if you're building a ramp and it's higher or longer than that, um, you'd have to rebuild it. You know, if, if you were actually building this park in real life, they would ask you to tear it down and rebuild it. And I made that guide because I have, so beneath the station, there's a station flyby and the exit of the station when you're walking, there's a bridge over a part of the coaster track. And that bridge has to go up because if not, if you were on the coaster, your hands would get knocked off by the bridge. So I had to build the bridge to be ADA compliant. And then I built the guide and put the guide up on the workshop. So if you need an ADA guide for a ramp, if you want to know the maximum size that you're allowed to have and the maximum degree of incline, I have that on the workshop. It's free to download. I don't remember if it's TMTK or not. I think it's just art shapes. Um, to my knowledge, it's just art shapes. I don't remember. Okay, now here you can see I'm getting the wood ready so I can put the iron girders beneath the track to help support itself. Girders beneath the track to help support itself. And then I ignore that for now and continue placing the wood supports up to the end of the curve. And so here I am starting. I'm, I'm basically copying what I previously done on the other section of track in the other video. Making sure everything's aligned properly. Getting the iron girders placed because I often make sure that it meets, um, meets clearance for the guests. So you'll see here in a bit, I am... Um, open my park with guests on the ride, make sure their hands are up so that there's plenty of clearance between the girders and their hands. Um, 
So like what's funny is say with Fury 325 for example, in the the helix, you pass under a support and with your hands up, I think there's about four or five more feet of clearance between your hands and the pole. I think. It's it's really close. Like you're closer to that pole than you are when you're going under the tunnel of that ride. Like it, it, that you come super close. And with some roller coasters, there's an over the shoulder restraint, and if that weren't there, a lot of coasters wouldn't meet clearance because you would be able to raise your arms up higher and you would be able to touch some other supports. So like with I think it's called Ninja at Six Flags Over Georgia, that coaster has over the shoulder restraints. And I'm I'm not sure if this is accurate. You can you know, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I think if if that ride had didn't have over the shoulders or something to prevent you from raising your arms up, I really feel like you would be able to hit some of the supports. Because I think there's a few supports that they had to cut into because of this. Sort of like with Millennium Force, you know, there's that famous picture of the support missing a chunk because it didn't be clearance. And there's, you know, there's even coasters like here at Magic Kingdom with Space Mountain. If I wanted to, I could probably touch some of the supports. But I, you know, I have common sense and I know not to. You know, use your common sense, people, when riding these rides. Don't put your hands up. Like, if you know you can touch it, please don't. Don't lose a finger. You know, we don't want that. Speaking of work, I do work at the Magic Kingdom here in Orlando, Florida. And I also work at Aquatica, which is SeaWorld's water park. And you know, here lately, I've been trying to work a lot just to try to keep some money in my account and make sure I take care of myself. So that's why I haven't been playing Planet Coaster a lot. And in my spare time, I've been working on sketches of Spooky Island from the 2003, 2002? I think it's 2002 Scooby-Doo movie. You know, Spooky Island is a theme park. It's just a fake theme park. It's really crazy. And I'm going through making it a realistic park so I'm going through redesigning it on paper how it would look if it were an actual park because if you look in the movie obviously a lot of those rides would not physically work in, in real life at all so I'll have to come up with a substitute in the game and also I'm working on sketches of a dis also I'm working on sketches of a Disney inspired villains theme park I have so many ideas and I can't wait to build it in Planet Coaster. I think if in if I were to build this in real life at Walt Disney World Resort, I would put it to the west of Epcot. Because you have Interna no, not International Drive. Um, you have World Drive and then Epcot to the east, and then to the west it's just Swampland. So I would um, clear that, put the park there, and then I would try to purchase land somewhere else, of course, um, to to reclaim land for nature because with Disney whatever land they develop they purchase land or you know elsewhere to keep it as nature if that makes sense it was a contract that Walt had wrote up you know, back when he was purchasing the property I think I'm sure other people know much more about that than I do so again correct me in the comments if I'm wrong so now here I have a I have these supports in this video um, right here at the top of the little at the bottom of the little hill over there where the track is straight that's kind of where i'm like okay i'm going to stop on supports for now um and then after that i uh i think after that i had started working on the station area and the track over there getting the foundations set like i said there's a lot between the end of this and what i have now like the that's all that I have for now, and there'll be more time lapse coming up soon. Um, the next couple of videos, it may jump around in what I do in the videos because there's a lot of me just, you know, stopping time lapse recording just so I can figure out what I want to do, and then I'll build some stuff without recording. So I'll have to probably stop a lot and explain what I did. So um, yeah, more videos coming soon. I don't know when they'll come out, but they will come out soon. So I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next video. Make each day count. Bye-bye for now.